Hello, good evening, welcome to Live Irish Schmitz. Hello, everybody, you're very welcome along to Chalk Waraku to Laurelin Moraku uh, for the latest episode. I had to think about that for a second of Live Irish Schmitz. We're not doing book talk tonight. We are on episode 120, and uh, tonight we are returning to the subject of trees. By popular demand, quite a lot of you have been saying, when are we doing more trees? And uh, by even more popular demand, we're talking about the oak tree. So there you go. Uh, welcome all. And uh, I suppose I should briefly tell you that uh, it's just been announced that um, by our government that we're going into full phase five, sorry, soft phase five lockdown. Everything's going to be shut except for the schools and what else? Some, believe it or not, some Gaelic football matches will be able to take place and some horse racing. Uh, but we're restricted now to within five kilometers of our home. And those who can work at home should work at home and all that. So interesting times. And it's a six-week situation. So we're back to, we're pretty much back to square one. We're back to where we were uh, in April. Anyway, uh, Live Irish Mix is a means of assuaging some of our fears and trepidations and anxieties about the situation in a way of bringing us together uh in 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 community uh, to have a chat and to enjoy an immersion into irish lore anyway better get to it because there's a lot of comments on youtube erica bow says good afternoon to all hello erica john main banachty don tua os san francisco toshe for august kyo again in you it's cold in san francisco very interested to hear about the noble oak today but we'll need to leave early unfortunately no problem john you can catch up maybe on the video later on daisy peters is in the house hello daisy a beautiful afternoon hi anthony and all our tua de mythflix hello daisy the full irish gk says Toronto. good evening to the great and the good to here we go again another six week lockdown might be the perfect time to go the time, Anto. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be, feels like it's going to be a long six weeks. Mandy McCurl says, hello, everyone. Hope you're staying well. Really looking forward to this episode. Cold and wet tonight. Well, we share that. We share the weather conditions, Mandy. It is cold and wet on this side of the Irish Sea as well. Deborah Williams says, hi, everyone from Hillsborough in Maryland. Hope you're all doing great today. Hello, Deborah. Um, I received my book this weekend. So excited to start reading it. I'm also all, almost finished your Mythical Ireland book. Work keeps getting in the way of my reading. So frustrating. I know the feeling, Deborah. <laughs> but I hope you really enjoy those. Um, thank you. Uh, Daniel Fagan. Every oak tree started as a couple of nuts who stood their ground. Good evening, all, from Rainy Arma. Yeah, absolutely. Ain't that the truth? Um, who else? Janet Moran. Geo Chantley and the Mighty Two are from Boston. Well, slightly north of Boston. Hello, Janet and all the Bostonians in the house. Uh, Mez Marion says, on Oh, the great beautiful oak. Hello, beautiful Mythflix family and dear Anthony, sharing a guy and guiding us in a wonderful way with hearts. Uh, I, I love the red heart. Stephen Walker says, Hey, everyone. Hello, Stephen. Alistair McKinnon says, It's pouring down here. Yes, it is definitely a night for the library. Absolutely. Susan Morris says, Good evening, all from London. Hello, Susan. Welcome along. And. Better get to the Facebookers because they're flying up the screen. Angel Barboni Smith is the first of the commenters tonight. Welcome along, Angel. Take a seat in the Mythical Ireland Library. Imagine yourself in front of a warm fire with a dram in your hand. Donna Jean Porter says, hello, hello, Donna. Barbara Barney, hi, Anthony, hi, everyone. Giagic Barney, sorry, Barbara. <laughs> Paula Snow Queen, hello, lovely people. Hello, Paula. A few words from you tonight, as well as the wavy hand. <laughs> Louise Sherrill says, hello, you. Falcha Louise. Conosata to Aaron Durrett says, howdy, Anthony and beloved to Oak Trees. Love Oak Trees. Welcome along, Aaron. Great to see you. Nick Eska Casterton. Really enjoying the book reviews. Hello to, to our friends. Yes, indeed. We have started a sort of a second series of live streams called Book Talk, which some of you are enjoying. And uh, there'll be plenty of stuff to talk about uh, over the next six weeks, I hope. Jackie says, hello, Tua, August, Anthony, Falcha, Jackie, ne Neil Hughes says, Toronto off in Coldbridge, Scotland, Mary and Neil ready with Tay, August, Fionn to hear about the Darach. Well, I'm delighted to hear it. Enjoy that, uh, Neil and Mary. Great to see you in the house. Melanie Lynn is here as well. Hello, Anthony and all the Tua, Falcha, Melanie, great to see you. Anne McCallum is here. Hello, Anthony and the mighty Tua. Just got home in time to make a pot of tea and get comfy. Sorry about the greater restrictions interesting that they're keeping the schools open yeah i know i know interesting is one word controversial is another uh, jacinta paisley says hi anthony and all the to uh, falcha jacinta welcome along serena swift says hello anthony and all jay glitch 
Kelly Edmiston. Hello, my Tua. We are acorns of the magical oak. Slauncha Kelly. Rex Fortenberry says, greetings from Louisiana. Kavosfi de Chorcha Ard. Thank you, Rex, and good evening to you also. Mariana Dunn says, Banachti to our dear Anthony and the Tua from Virginia. US COVID numbers are on the rise too. Stay safe, everyone. Good advice, uh, Mariana. We'll do our best and you do likewise. Trees, how wonderful. Hello, Anthony and the Tua. Hard times for all with COVID coming around again. So grateful for our community as I am, and I think many others are. Susan, it's wonderful. Elaine Dent Lingenfelter says, honey, I'm home. <laughs> Tom King says, good evening, Anthony and all the friendly too. I hope all in good fettle. Lovely topic tonight. Very much looking forward. Yes, indeed, Tom. I'm sure you are. Welcome along. Donacha O'Dover says, is it Dover or Dover? Uh, hello from Tala in Dublin. Tala Muncher Parthalone. Good evening, Donacha. Martin Dohany says, good evening, Anthony and all the two are from a wet and windy Kilkenny. And yeah, it's the same all over by the looks of it. Uh, Yvette Tillema says hello from a cold and rainy Keene, New York. So there you go. It's even on the other side of the ocean. Hugs to all the mighty oaks. Thank you, Anthony. Stay safe all. Desiree Riley is in the house. Hi, Anthony. All the two are super sad about everyone going back into lockdown, but really loving book talks. Brilliant stuff. Glad you're enjoying those, Desiree. Mavanwe Millward is in the house. Good evening, Anthony. And Mithlix to uh, we'll be joining you with the full lockdown here in Wales from this Friday. The autumn colours will keep us distracted. Looking forward to this episode. Ah, oh, see more, and it's bringing me into a different screen. Uh, on the oak, there are some beautiful ancient oaks in this bit of mid Wales. Lovely stuff. Alan Hoskins says hello from Ballina, Killaloo, County Tipperary. Hello, Alan. Sirsha Nichandel, J. Lewin, Hona, Jeev, Anthony, August, Natua. A new Tugamage Omos, Don Chran, Darak, Sacralche, the sacred oak tree. Dawn Hilton says, hey, I love oak trees. Love from Accrington, Lancashire, home of the oak trees. Brilliant stuff. Hello, Dawn. Margaret Kiernan says, good night, Anthony. Wintertime, huh? Wintertime is right. Gone are those balmy, sunny evenings. Janet Moran says, so sorry about my favourite island's regression. Everyone lucky enough to be there. Stay safe. Absolutely, yes. We have a five kilometres lockdown. I still can't go to Newgrange. Pamela Walter says, Gigi, Anthony, and lovely Tua from the Netherlands. Hello, Pamela. Great to see you in the house. Paul O'Brien says, hi, Anthony. I'm delighted. I'm able to listen in tonight. Hello, Paul. Connors a thought, too. It's great to see you. Adina Spark says, afternoon, Anthony, and the Tua. They're starting another round of lockdown here, too. It looks like it's just the, the autumn thing, isn't it? You know? Doris O'Hara. Good evening, Anthony, and Tua from Heidelberg. Hello, Doris. Tony O'Neill says, hello, Anthony. Staying safe in Waterloo, Ontario. Slaunch it. Slaunch it, Tony. Uh, Sheila Murphy Weekly. Lovely fall day here in West Virginia, USA. 69 degrees and mostly sunny. Sounds lovely. Send a bit of it across the way here, will you? <laughs> uh, Nola Snyder says, cheers, Anthony and everyone. The tree spirits will hold us all in strength. Oak is in my Garrity family crest. Wow, there you go. Neve Smith says, hi, Anthony and everyone. Really enjoying these live videos. So interesting and I'm learning loads. Well, as I'm always saying, Every day is a learning experience, and I'm learning every time I do one as well. Caitlin Moon, slightly panicky in Dublin this evening. At least I'll get a, a good bit of work done. Yeah, hopefully, Caitlin, good luck with that anyway. Keep the head down. Ray, Raymond Lind says hi from the South Island of New Zealand. Thank you. What time of the day is it there? It has to be ridiculous o'clock, but very, you're very good morning to you. A happy Tuesday morning from... Monday evening here in the Boyne Valley. Gillian Stapleton says, good evening all. Hello, Gillian. Sandrine Brady is in the house. Hello, Sandrine. Bonsoir, dear Tua. Hope everyone is keeping safe. Paris and major cities in France are imposing a curfew from 9 p.m. until we also get into another lockdown. Ryan Murphy, another Murphy in the house, is in Inish Owen. No, Inish Owen. Yes, Inish Owen on the border with Dura. Yes, we'll talk about that in a moment, about the place names. That's fascinating. But good evening, Ryan. Always a great pleasure to uh, welcome another Murphy into the house. Who knows who says hi from Navin. Hello, who knows who, who knows who you are. <laughs> Susan Morrish, I think we said hello to. Yes, we did. Brilliant. Oh, is it 8 a.m.? 8, 10 a.m. Oh, okay. I must have my times wrong for New Zealand then. You must check that for me. Um, daylight savings, of course, happens at different times in different parts of the world. So it's not always possible to fully keep in touch with it all the time. Uh, Joanne Wolf says, greetings from Pennsylvania in the USA. Hello, Joanne. Joe Butler is in the house. 
Hello, Anthony and Tua. More restrictions in Colorado too. So nice to be here. Nice to have you here. Natasha Komaski. Hi, Anthony. Good evening from Ockram in County Wicklow. Controversially keeping my kids home into this lockdown due to a couple of positive cases in school community deemed not close, but casual contacts. Looking forward to Oak distractions. A safe night to you all. Natasha, that sounds like a sensible decision. No problem. Welcome along. Trisha Jimenez says, hello from Walla Walla, Washington. Hello, Trisha. Hello to all our friends in Washington. Annie Redwolf Murphy, and yet another Murphy in the Murphy household. Greetings, cousin. Hello, Annie Falche. Michelle Rhodes is in Sheffield, says, spent the other Sunday hugging oak trees on Wadsley. Is it Wadsley and Loxley Common? Nice to see them getting the PR. Brilliant stuff. Shannon Kelly Smith says, we've snow in Iowa, USA. Perfect day for this. Brilliant. Stay in, stay warm, stay safe. Mandy... Engelk says hello from Yall, which is in County Cork. Hello, Mandy. Good evening to you. Saoirse, sure, you'd think a radio man would know the times all around the world at all times, lol. Yeah, wouldn't you? You'd think. Or even just use Google, you know. <laughs> Alan Taff says hi. Hello from Leon. Alan Taff, still in hospital. Look forward to Mondays and your talks getting me through this hard time. Alan, uh, get well soon from all of us. Uh, and hopefully you'll be back on your feet in no time. Brandy Jean says, and I'm in Southwest Washington State. Cinnabar in the Cascade foothills. Dol Mac McDermott says, hi, Anthony and Tua. I'm an oak tree sweet pea. Brilliant stuff. Serena Swift, I'm on the pen. And Kendra Kelly, also in Washington State, USA. We have a lot of Washington Staters. We always do, in fairness. Uh, the West Coast is always very well represented on Live Irishmen. Patricia Lochran McTagg is in the house. So happy to be able to listen from Illinois. Illinois, listen live from Illinois. Maybe getting some snow this afternoon. Don't mention that in front of my wife. She really loves snow. She would love a few feet of snow outside right now, you know. Uh, what are we on? We're on 12 minutes. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. We've done quite well to get 12 minutes. A few announcements before we start the episode proper. It won't be long. Kelly Nichiali says, me too, in Puddletown, Seattle. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Trisha, thanks you. Jimenez. Most people here don't pronounce my surname correctly. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm glad I got it right. I was a bit uh, wary of it. But I'm happy. I'm happy. Wanted to say thanks to, uh, if you saw the image today, sorry, the graphic for today's episode with the sun shining through the oak tree and the mist. That wasn't my photo. That was from user MBLL on Pixabay. Uh, and it's a really beautiful image. So we want to say thanks to uh, MBLL for the beautiful photo. I announced in Book Talk last night, but I'm going to announce it again, the 2021 calendar. The Mythical Ireland 21, 2021 calendar is uh, on the printing presses as we speak. Should have it uh, around this time next week or sometime early next week, all going well. So well ahead of schedule. The original schedule was I would have them available for posting in mid-November. And it now looks like I'll possibly have them out before Halloween. Fingers crossed and all that. Um, so um, uh, if you haven't done... Uh, might be a good time to get in your pre-order. Um, I'm sending the right link here because I know I've done it before where I have sent what I thought was the wrong link and it wasn't the right, right it was the wrong link. Uh, and that is the link. I just shared it as a comment there to where you can purchase the calendar. Don't forget that everybody who pre-orders a calendar, in other words, until I actually have them in my hands, you're entered into a draw free, a free draw. And the winner of that draw will receive the out of print, uh, the field names of County Meath, a wonderful publication. So get your pre-orders in now while you can. We'll be done now. Uh, Island 2020. Oh, I meant to say, yes. Look, it's just that with the lockdown in place, uh, I have still have copies, but they are going. And I'm not at all uh, sure that I'm going to be able to replenish my stock. So if you're looking for Island of the Setting Sun, 2020 edition signed copy signed by both myself and Richard Moore. Uh, now is the time to get it. Uh, and again, I will share the link to the Mythical Ireland shop, Mythical Ireland bookshop. Imagine the Mythical Ireland website has its own bookshop um, where you can buy your signed copy. Thank you very much. 
Um, don't forget on the Mythical Ireland community on on Facebook. So this is a we live stream on the Mythical Ireland page, but we also have a separate community that is growing all the time. And you know, there's something really lovely about it: the interaction between people, but also the number of very inspired, creative. Uh, people that we have. I'm pasting in a link to that community just in case you're not a member. Um, so, for instance, just in the past week, I wanted to single out two people. Uh, Tom King uh, shared some of his uh, iron work with us. Tom is a, uh, what we call a smith. Uh, he has his own forge, and he made this beautiful piece, um, among other bits and pieces, uh, which I keep around my neck, the spiral pendant, uh, which is a beautiful piece of work. So Tom was sharing some of his work. And then today we had the most beautiful image uh, from Sheila Moylan, uh, which was called The Dream of Angus Og, which uh, was a combination of the myth about Angus and care and the artwork on Curbstone 52 at Newgrange. Really, really fabulous. Get over there and have a look. And if you're not already a member, click the join button. Don't forget to answer the questions uh, when you're joining just to make sure that you understand the rules and all of that. There are a few, you know. To, as always, mention my patrons, thank you to the patrons of Mythical Ireland over at patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. Uh, several of the Iron Age, all of the Iron Age patrons have now received their Mythical Ireland mug. And if you've been on, if you've been hovering around the uh, Mythical Ireland uh, Facebook uh, pages uh, in the past few days, you might have seen uh, photos of the Mythical Ireland mug. I designed it, uh, but it, it is uh, uh, printed and shipped by Patreon, so I don't actually have one in my hand, which is, I know, a slightly unusual situation. Anyway, thanks as always for your support. That's patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland, and that's in as a comment there now. And just before we finish, to say that uh, with uh, Level 5 lockdown uh, looking like it's going to be in place for six weeks, uh, that's a long time. I will probably try to live stream more regularly. Um, we might might consider doing two Live Irish Mits episodes per week and maybe two book talk episodes per week. I don't want to commit to a rigid schedule simply because life is busy and there's lots of other stuff to be done, including I'm trying to find time to write and everything else. Uh, but we probably will increase slightly the frequency of episodes. So I hope that's good news and I hope you all enjoy yourselves when you're here. Uh, Bianca Fashel says, Hi, Anthony. Good evening, Falcha. Uh, Bianca, great to see you. Jacinta Paisley, just wondering if you got my order for your book today. Uh, let me just check, Jacinta. Yes, I do. And in fact, uh, it was posted today. And silly me, I have I keep the invoices here, you see. And I, I, I put on them when they were enveloped. And I also put on, on them when they were posted. And I forgot to say that it was posted today. So there you go. Hopefully... That will arrive. There's a chance that might arrive tomorrow, Jacinta, because you're in Ireland. Um, but, you know, you never know. Could be two or three days. So you should get it uh, before the end of the week By in, in any case. And let me know if you don't. But thank you very much for your order. And I hope you really enjoy it, as I'm sure you will. Anyway, we better get on with it. Uh, oh, oh, we're okay, time-wise. There's lots to talk about tonight. Um how far is how far away is your closest post office? Is about two kilometers, Paula. I get I can get there in less than five minutes in the car, uh, and if I, if I walk, I could get there in maybe 10, 12, 15 minutes, depending on what speed I I walk at. So tonight is interesting. We're going back to the subject of trees. Now, the oak tree. Uh, Tarini Pendleton says hi all. Folja Tarini. Barbara Murphy's in the house from Tucson in Arizona. And Ushin Lally says, etymology of the word apple, phonetically very like abal, which is Irish. Aval. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I love all those uh, 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 f f linguistic, philological, phonetic connections. Some of them are a bit tenuous, but I like them all the same. They're interesting. Um, so uh, the oak formerly was a very revered tree, you know. Uh, so we know that from certain myths and uh, folk tales. Uh, we also know that in uh, prehistory it was a it was an important source of timber, uh, maybe not so sacred. But for instance, the great uh, 
timber structures of the late Neolithic at Brunabonia, such as Drone Henge and the Great Palisade and the Four Posters, etc. Uh, the archaeologists reckon that they were most likely uh, constructed with oak boughs, uh, which is fascinating. So, with that in mind, let's go. Let's go right before we do anything at all. I want to show you a map. I thought this was very, very interesting. Really, really fascinating stuff. So the Irish for oak wood is Dura, D O I R E. Uh, or the Irish for oak on its own is Dar, D A I R. And um, there are a huge number of occurrences of the place name Dura, or as it's anglicized, Derry. Uh, so we have. Derry City in Northern Ireland, um, which is probably the most famous example, um, but there are lots of others. So listen to this. Oak was the most common species in Ireland up until the Middle Ages. We shouldn't be surprised by that. And the anglicised form is included in many townland names. By the way, I'm reading from the Irish, Irish woods since Tudor times, their distribution and exploitation by Eileen McCracken. But I want to show you this map. This is amazing. I think it's amazing. Sorry, I don't uh, mean to use uh, such a... Um, um, absolutes, but it is. Um, there are about 62,200 townland names in Ireland, and about 1,600 contain dairy in one form or another, either as a prefix or suffix, and in some cases the name stands alone. Map 2 shows the distribution of these various forms of dairy. Oh, now, hopefully you can see all the dots on this map. I hope you can see all the dots. I'll bring it up close and then show you a sweep. Look at all those place names in Ireland with dura or dairy in them. Isn't that incredible? You can see there's a uh, a, 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 a very notable concentration uh, running up from Leitrim uh, into oh, towards Loch Ney. Uh, there's a notable concentration, and there's a notable lack in the southern part of the country. Fascinating stuff. So, uh, of course, um, about a third of all the occurrences of dairy are found in the counties of Monaghan. Fermanagh, Armagh, Cavan, Leitrim, Longford, and Roscommon. So that's sort of the Midlands up into the north of the island. Uh, really fascinating stuff. The presence of Derry is not surprising in regions known to have been wooded, North Armagh, the Loch Erne Basin, the Southwest Peninsulas, and the upper reaches of the Lee and Blackwater in Cork. Nor is its absence unexpected in the upland regions of the Antrim Plateau, the Sperrins, the Wicklow Hills, and the parallel ridges of the southwest. So there's the main reason uh, there weren't trees uh, uh, down there. Anyway, that is uh, sort of a historical look uh, at, well, uh, more to do with the place names. So tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start off by dipping into... Uh, this book, which I'm not sure if I've mentioned before, The Golden Bough by Sir James Fraser. Uh, I hope and think that some of you, perhaps many of you, will be familiar with The Golden Bough. Um, it was a sort of a landmark study in anthropology uh, and looking at comparative uh, mythology and religious uh, celebration, etc., uh, across uh, a wide area. Um, of Europe um, and was one of the first sort of large uh, volumes that did that, that sort of uh, very uh, intense um, comparative work. It runs to over 700 pages, by the way. It's quite a read. Uh, I wanted to just briefly touch on the worship of the oak. Um, so to set the scene before we actually dip into the Irish mythology, uh, the worship of the oak tree or of the oak god appears to have been shared by all the branches of the Aryan stock in Europe. Both Greeks and Italians associated the tree with their highest god, Zeus or Jupiter, the divinity of the sky, the rain and the thunder. 
Perhaps the oldest and certainly one of the most famous sanctuaries in Greece was that of Dodona, where Zeus was revered in the oric oracular oak. The thunderstorms which are said to rage at Dodona more frequently than anywhere else in Europe would render the spot a fitting home, pardon me, for the god whose voice was heard alike in the rustling of the oak leaves and in the crash of the thunder. Do you like that? Kimberly Fields Sipola is in the house. Hello, Kimberly. Perhaps the Bronze Age gongs which kept up a humming in the wind round the sanctuary were meant to mimic the thunder that might so often be heard rolling and rumbling in the combs of the stern and barren mountains which shut in the gloomy val valley. In Boeotia, as we have seen, the sacred marriage of Zeus and Hera, the oak god and the oak goddess, appears to have been celebrated with, with much pomp by a religious federation of states. And on Mount Lysaeus in Arcadia, the character of Zeus as god both of the oak and of the rain comes out clearly in the rain charm practiced by the priest of Zeus who dipped an oak branch in a sacred spring. In his latter capacity, Zeus was the god to whom the Greeks regularly prayed for rain. Nothing could be more natural, for often, though not always, he had his seat on the mountains where the clouds gather and the oak grow. On the Acropolis at Athens, there was an image of earth praying to Zeus for rain. And in time of drought, the Athenians themselves prayed, rain, rain, O dear Zeus, on the corn land of the Athenians and on the plains. Again, Zeus wielded the thunder and lightning as well as the rain. At Olympia and elsewhere, he was worshipped under the surname Thunderbolt. And at Athens, there was a sacrificial hearth of lightning Zeus on the city wall, where some priestly officials watched for lightning over Mount, Mount Parnes at certain seasons of the year. Further, spots which had been struck by lightning were regularly fenced in by the Greeks and consecrated to Zeus the Descender, that is, to the god who came down in a flash from heaven. Wonderful stuff. Altars were set up within these enclosures and sacrifices offered on them. Several such places are known from inscriptions to have existed in Athens. Uh, I'm just going to read the bit about... When we pass from... I need to get my glasses. I apologise. I knew there was something missing. Anne Hurley is saying hello, Judy McQueen, hello. When we pass from Southern to Central Europe, we still meet with the great God of the Oak and the Thunder among the barbarous Aryans who dwelt in the vast primeval forests. Thus among the Celts of Gaul, the Druids esteemed nothing more sacred than the mistletoe and the Oak on which it grew. They chose groves of Oak for the scene of their solemn service and they performed none of their rites without oak leaves. The Celts, says a Greek writer, worshipped Zeus, and the Celtic image of Zeus is a tall oak. The Celtic conquerors who settled in Asia in the third century before our era appear to have carried the worship of the oak with them to their new home. For in the heart of Asia Minor, the Galatian Senate met in a place which bore the pure Celtic name of Drenematum, the sacred oak grove, or the temple of the oak. Indeed, the very name of Druids is believed by good authorities to, to mean no more than oak men. In the religion of the ancient Germans, the veneration for sacred groves seems to have held the foremost place, and according to Grimm, the chief of their holy trees was the oak. It appears to have been especially dedicated to the god of thunder, Donar or Thunar, Thunar, the equivalent of the Norse Thor, for a sacred oak near Geismar in Hesse, which Boniface cut down in the 8th century, went among the heathen by the name of Jupiter's oak, Robor Jovis, in which in Old German would be Donaris A, the oak of Donar, that the Teutonic thunder god Donar Thunar Thor was identified with the Italian thunder god Jupiter, appears from our word Thursday, Thunar's day, which is merely a rendering of the Latin Deus Jovis. Thus, among the ancient Teutons, as among the Greeks and Italians, the god of the oak was also god of the thunder. Moreover, he was regarded as the great fertilizing power who sent rain and caused the earth to bear fruit. For Adam of Bremen tells us that, quote, Thor presides in the air, 
He it is who rules thunder and lightning, wind and rains, fine weather and crops, unquote. Sounds a little bit like the reference to Dagda, uh, that he looked after the crops and the harvest. In those respects, therefore, the Teutonic thunder god again resembled his southern counterparts, Zeus and Jupiter. And that is The Wonderful, The Golden Bow by James Fraser. That's the most early first half of the 20th century, I think, wasn't it? Published or the six, 1960s or before, I think. And it doesn't immediately give the publication date. This is a 1993 reprint. Oh, this volume was first published in 1922. There you go. Also of interest, uh, although I think we're on sort of slightly more speculative ground, is The White Goddess by Robert Graves. Uh, Robert Graves uh, talks about the tree alphabet uh, of the Druids, etc., uh, etc. Et and, uh, you know, uh, there is a bit of controversy uh, about that uh, as, as to its true uh, uh, genesis or, uh, you know, whether it was... A thing or not. I don't know, I'm just going to read a short uh, section and we may repeat some of uh, Fraser uh, in this. The seventh tree is the oak, the tree of Zeus, Jupiter, Hercules, the Dagda, the chief of the elder Irish gods, Thor, and all the other thunder gods, Jehovah, in so far as he was El and Allah. Or Allah. I, forgive me. The royalty of the oak tree needs no enlarging upon. Most people are familiar with the argument of Sir James Fraser's golden bow. Here we go. Which concerns the human sacrifice of the oak king of Nemi on Midsummer Day. The fuel of the Midsummer fires is always oak. The fire of Vesta at Rome was fed with oak. And the need fire is always kindled in an oak log. Midsummer is the flowering season of the oak, which is the tree of endurance and triumph. And like the ash is said to court the lightning flash. My apologies. Its roots are believed to extend as deep underground as its branches rise in the air. Virgil mentions this, which makes it emblematic of a god whose law runs both in heaven and in the underworld. Poseidon, the ash god, and Zeus, the oak god, were both once armed with thunderbolts. But when the Achaeans humbled the Aeolians, Poseidon's bolt was converted into a trident or fish spear, and Zeus reserved the sole right to wield the bolt. Sir James, I'm, I'm skipping because I want to get to the Irish stuff. Sir James Fraser, like Guion, has published out sorry, has pointed out the similarity of door words in all Indo-European languages and shown Janus to be a stout guardian of the door with his head pointing in both directions. As usual, however, he does not press his argument far enough. Dur, D-U-I-R, as the god of the oak month, looks both ways because his post is at the turn of the year, which identifies with him with the oak god Hercules, who became the doorkeeper of the gods after his death. He is probably also to be identified with the British god Clear or Hlud or Nud, and our equivalents would be uh, Lu and Nuadu, a god of the sea, uh, and Lear, sorry, Lear, uh, Lear, Lud, uh, or Nud, sorry, uh, I'm not sure about the connection with Lu, but certainly Lear and possibly Nuadu, a god of the seafaring Bronze Age people who was the father of Cordelia, an aspect of the white goddess. For according to Geoffrey of Monmouth, the grave of Lear at Leicester was in a vault built in honour of Janus. And he writes, Cordelia, obtaining the government of the kingdom, buried her father in a certain vault, which she ordered to be made from him under the river Soar in Leicester, which had been built originally under the ground in honour of the god Janus. And here all the workmen of the city, upon the anniversary sol solemnity of that festival, used to begin their yearly labours. The old wakes, the hiring fairs of the English countryside came to be held at various dates between March and October, according to the date of the local Saints' Day. At Renbury Wakes, early apples are ripe, but originally they must have all, all taken place at Lamas between the, the hay harvest and the corn harvest. That the wakes were mourning the dead king is confirmed in chapter 17. Uh, that's this work. 
uh, etc., etc. In other words, the ancient Druidic religion based on the oak cult will be swept away by Christianity and the door, the godlier, will, will languish forgotten in the castle of Arian Road, the Corona Borealis. Okay, so uh, highly recommend it if you haven't got it in your collection. Well, especially recommend it. The White Goddess by James Fraser, uh, sorry, by uh, Robert Graves and The Golden Bow by Sir James Fraser. And on to the Irish situation where, as I said, informally, uh, are we okay? The Facebook feed must have been down, was it? A few people are saying they lost it. I believe uh, Rowan says it was Pliny the Elder who postulated that Druid derived from the Sanskrit Dru or Deru, Oak and Vid wisdom. Don't have my sources in front of me. Yeah, that sounds right, uh, Rowan. That sounds right. Uh, where are we? We are talking about the oak, the dyer, D A I R. The oak provides strong and excellent timber and a plentiful crop of acorns, which provides food for many animals. This, together with its stately bearing and long life, make it a symbol of strength, fertility, kingship, and endurance. The oak was used for kindling the bonfires or need fires of May time and midsummer in Scotland and Wales. In North Oost in Scotland, a sandy plain bore the name of Sol Darach, Sol Garach or Oak Log. A beam of oak lay there from which the people produced the need fires. Similar customs existed on the isle, islands of Skye, Mull and Tyree. The Bialtana fire was kindled by rubbing a drill made of oak in a borehole of an oak plank, and similar customs were followed in Wales. Cathy May Dayo is in the house. Hello, Cathy May. Welcome along. A Scottish custom involved the toasting of a bannock on St. Michael's Eve on a fire of rowan or oak wood. Perhaps these customs explain the description in a Scots Gaelic poem of the oak as being of the sun. In Wales, May Day fires were kindled by rubbing two bits of oak together over kindling consisting of nine different types of wood. Wow. Talk about going to a very special effort. This association of oak with fire had a more sinister side. J.W. Campbell states in his book on the folk tales of the Scottish Highlands that whenever a man is to be burned for some evil deed, faggots of green oak are used for the task and recounts the tale of how a king, on learning of his son's cowardice, calls for faggots of green oak for a fire to burn them. In Wales, the May Day festivities generally also involved gatherings on the village green around a small mound called a timpath, which would often be decked with oak branches. A musician, usually a harpist or fiddler, sat on the mound while playing. These festivities often also occurred at other times throughout the summer. Interestingly, the Dogda possessed a harp called Dor Da Blau, the oak of the two meadows, on which he played peaceful, sorrowful and joyful music. The oak has associations with magic and the other world. In Scotland, a Highlander would draw a circle around himself with an oak sapling to protect himself from the fairies. In Brittany, a piece of oak wood is used as a talisman. In the Tawn, Cuchulain writes a piece of oim, oim on an oak sapling while adopting a magical posture and twists it around a standing stone in order to hinder the armies of Maeve. Rowan says she'll be lighting a nine-wood fire at Samhain. Wow, brilliant stuff. Macy Damon says, Gia Glitch, after a long time. Hello, Macy, long time no see indeed. Brilliant. Paula, say nothing. Don't draw any attention to it. Let's just forget it didn't happen. He later lays a great oak tree in a gap and writes Oam on it for the same purpose. A poem in the Metrical Dinshanicus about the Shlia Dala talks about the ancient lore of Samhain being learned in oak woods, quote, from spirits and fairy folk, unquote. There you go. I did it again. What can I say? The pursuit of Jermud and Gráinne 
sorry, in the pursuit of Dermot and Gráinne, I left the word in on the bottom of the previous page. The pair stop at a place called Dura Gá Vui, an oak wood of the two fools. And Dermot cuts seven doors of wood from the grove to protect them. These may have had magical significance as the Fianna were unable to pass through them and are forced to wait for Dermot to come out. There is also a play on words here between Dura, D-O-I-R-E, which means oak grove, and Dursha, D-O-I-R-S-E, which is the Irish word for doors. Anthony, a really well done book on trees is by Ellen Everett Hopman. Her book, A Druid's Herbal of Sacred Tree Medicine. She centers her work in Ireland, though she lives in the northeast of the US. I know Ellen actually quite well. I've known her online for years and years. She's absolutely delightful to listen to and extremely knowledgeable in the own tree alphabet. There are many videos of her speaking. Not sure if would be interested, but I'm sure she would do a live Irish Mits if you contacted her. Just a suggestion. She really is wonderful. Well, actually, the fact that I know her, uh, I'm sure. Um, and sh I, I know that she... Uh, she 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 has read several of uh, my books, so brilliant, you know. Anybody know what book he's reading? Yvette always wants to know what the name of the book is. No, I'm not telling you. Go away. <laughs> it's Niall McCutcher's Irish Trees, Myths, Legends and Folklore. A wonderful, wonderful book. Have to be careful not to read too much of it, which is why I'm just trying to read small excerpts uh, so that we don't, uh, you know, uh, that we're we're engaged in fair use here. Make sure that you buy your copy. Uh, published, uh, actually, uh, published uh, with uh, help from the uh, uh, the Heritage Council by the Collins Press. Uh, and this one is first published 2003. I'm not sure if it has been reprinted, but anyway, I'm sure you can find copies of it online. Irish Trees, Myths, Legends and Folklore by Niall McCutcher, M-A-C-C-O-I-T-I-R. My first historic harp, says Caitlin, a replica of the Brian Baru harp in TCD. I called the Dagda. Strangely, oak isn't used in historic harp construction. That's interesting, isn't it? Okay. The oak, this is legends and mythology. The oak is nowadays seen as the supreme tree of the Druids. The image derives mainly from the Roman naturalist Pliny, who wrote as follows, quote, the Druids hold nothing more sacred than the mistletoe and the tree that bears it, always supposing that tree to be an oak. Of course, we saw this, didn't we? Quoted this from, was it Fraser? But they choose groves formed of oaks for the sake of the tree alone, and they never perform any of their rites except in the presence of a branch of it. So that it seems probable that the priests themselves may derive their name from the Greek word from that tree, for that tree, unquote. Pliny then went on to describe the much quoted ritual of the Gaulish Druids cutting mistletoe from the oak tree with a golden sickle after sacrificing two white bulls. The Greek scholar Maximus of Tyre, writing in the second century, commented that the Celts worshipped the lightning god's use in the form of high oak trees. And of course, we did read that in uh, Fraser. There is archaeological evidence to back up these assertions. A column erected near Stuttgart to the Celtic Jupiter by Romanized Celts is adorned with oak leaves and acorns and a depiction of the Celtic sun god at uh, Segure in Provence. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Please forgive me. Is accompanied by an oak tree with a serpent twined about it. The Gaulish god Apollo Vindonus had offerings of oak objects made to him at a healing spring sacred to him near Burgundy. Near Scarborough, at a funeral mound at Gristhorpe, there was found a Bronze Age oak coffin covered in oak branches together with the remains of mistletoe, an old man skeleton, and in Brittany, many megalithic tombs contain a bedding of oak leaves. I did not know that. That's fascinating. Also, according to the Greek scholar Strabo, or Strabo, if you prefer, the Galatians, Celts living in Asia Minor, had their central meeting place at Drunameton, or the Oak Grove Sanctuary. The Cad Godu had this to say about the oak. Before the swift oak darts, heaven and earth did quake, and oak, oak saplings ensnared us by the incantation of the oak priest. This would appear 
to be strong evidence that the oak was considered by the Druids to be their most sacred tree, but the argument has flaws. In the first place, it is now considered by most scholars that, contrary to Pliny's assertion, the name Druid almost likely most likely comes from the Celtic Druvid, meaning very knowledgeable. Secondly, so there you go. Um, I'm not sure who was pointing that out earlier on, uh, but didn't have the sources to hand. Uh, secondly, while the evidence points to the oak being associated with the Celtic Zeus or Jupiter, this does not mean that other deities and their associated trees were not considered as important. Strong evidence points to the equal importance of the Celtic mother goddess and her associated trees, the ash and yew. Lastly, this tells us nothing about what tree or trees were considered important to the Druids as Druids. As, and here the evidence contradicts Pliny's assertion that the oak was needed for every druidic rite. The rowan and whitethorn were prized for their magical properties and the hazel for the mystical power of its nuts. Nevertheless, the oak was a very important tree to the Celts and its lore is rich and complex. In Ireland, several well-known Christian sites are associated with oak groves, which were probably chosen for their pre-Christian significance. Among them are Dara Colgach, or Derry, founded by St. Colum Kill, and the monastic school at Mai Darach, the Oak Plain, or Duro. So great was his regard for the oak wood at Derry that Colum Kill declared that he was more fearful of the sound of axes in it than he was of death. Another site was Kildara, the Church of the Oak, or Kildare, founded by Bridget. The high oak tree there was considered blessed by her and remained for many years as a source of miracles. The oak is a symbol of kingship because of its connotations of strength and fertility. The word for oak in Irish also means a chief and the same is true in Welsh. The Annals of Connacht for the year 40, 1442 described the children of King Ardgar Mor my Makama as, quote, fragrant trees and mighty oaks of bounty, unquote, for their generosity in distributing horses and treasure, money to every suppliant. In the story of Cormac MacArt's visit to Mananon MacLear, he sees a man kindling a fire by throwing a thick oak tree upon it. But by the time the man arrived with a second oak, the first one would be burnt out. Mananon later explains that this represents a young lord who is more generous than he can afford, with everyone but himself benefiting from his largesse. The sons of Terran praised King Tuus as the oak above the trees, quote, that is, as the oak is beyond the kingly trees of the wood, so are you beyond the kings of the world for open-handedness and for grandeur, unquote. Keating's History of Ireland tells of the King Fachna Macshanka Macool, who had a direct link with the land's fertility, like the name, by the way. Kerem Gogus is in the house. Hope the ankle is uh, feeling a bit better, Kerem. Rowan says you just made a fresh batch of elderberry cordial. Well, if it wasn't for this damn COVID, we could pass it round, you know, in a mether. Uh, if he gave a bad judgment at harvest time, all the acorns would fall off the trees. However, if his judgment was a good one, the oaks retained their fruits. The most famous oak tree in Irish legend, the oak of Munya, or Moon in County Kildare, was closely associated with kingship. It was planted by the mythical figure of Fintan Macbochna, also known as Fintan Macbochra, uh, who we met in lots and lots of different stories but remained hidden from view until it appeared at the time of the birth of the legendary king, Con Cahoc, which is Con of the Hundred Battles. The oak was enormous in size, being 30 cubits in girth and 300 in height, and bore three crops a year, one of acorns, one of nuts, and one of apples. Naturally, the crops were prodigious, with apples, wonderful, marvellous, nuts, round, blood red, and acorns, brown, ridgy. And one poem mentions a crop of 900 sackfuls of acorns. It finally fell southward across my Alve, 
in the time of the sons of Aid Slanya. One version has it that this was because wind had also felled the ash of Thornton, while another version claims that it was destroyed by the poets. The metrical Dinchanicus contains the following two poems about it. Plain of Munya. O Munya, host to a tree so fine that God fashioned in ancient times. A tree so greatly blessed with flavour. Sorry, with... <laughs> I'll start that again. A tree so greatly blessed with favour. With three fruits so choice in flavour. Acorn and slim nut so brown. And apple wild and sweetly grown. The king would get without let up three times a year a mighty crop. Tree of Munya, great its worth, thirty cubits full in girth, from far and wide a glorious sight, three hundred cubits full its height. So the pure branch was brought down as wind broke the tree of Torton. Thus life's quarrels pass away like the ancient tree of Munya's plain. And in a separate poem, the tree of Munya, Tree of Munya, great and fair, highest its top beyond compare. Thirty cubits, no small count, the measure of its girth's amount. Three hundred high, tree without stain, a thousand could gather in its shade. In the northeast hidden from sight until con of the hundred fights. A hundred score warriors, no idle boast, a thousand and forty more at most. Could gather there with raucous noise till the satire of poets it destroyed. Snapper Earl was asking, can you eat Irish acorns? And it's being answered that you have to dry them out and pound them into a powder. Then you can use the flour. Uh, Joe says they, they must be ground and soaked and rinsed and repeat. Yeah, big job, but worth it, says Nola. American ones can be eaten, but they must be cooked, pounded to a powder, and made into bread, I think. So actual apples and oak trees, too. Now I get it, says Kelly. There is also evidence of oaks standing near royal sites. A poem about the fort, uh, fort of Rathangan calls it the Fort by the Oak Trees. Recent excavation at Navan Fort, the old site of Awanmacha, found a large oak post in the centre of a massive circular structure, the purpose of which is believed to be primarily ritual. It is thought that the post may have been the focus of ritual activities to the Celtic Jupiter as a sacred symbol of tribal integrity. The oak is connected with certain animals, particularly the stag, bull, pig and eagle. One story which concerns the adventures of the eagle Lathan tells of the stag Dovkosach, what does that mean, Blackfoot, who stands beside a bear oak spike. The stag was born beside the oak when it was only a sapling, grew into a mighty stag as the oak grew into a mighty tree, and stayed with it until it was nothing but a stump. Isn't that a lovely story? In the Lays of Fionn, a, a lay called the Enchanted Stag tells of an occasion when the Fianna were out hunting and were killing 100 stags from, from every oak grove all around. They come upon a huge stag in one and give chase. During the chase, the stag reveals he is the king done and challenges the Fianna that they will not kill him so long as there are deer in Ireland, as he, done was the herdsman of all the, the deer. Nevertheless, the Fianna succeed in killing him in the end. Another lay mentions the Fianna starting a huge stag from a fresh brown dun or oak wood. In another story about the Fianna, Fionn, Oshin and Coilche are hunting in a wood at Figoil. Uh, County Offaly when they are confronted by a headless spectre who demands that they give him one of their heads unless his own be found. Nothing daunted, Oshin and Quilcha strike at an oak tree with their swords and the scepter's own huge head falls from its branches. The spectre is a vision of the god Dun. Dun is the underworld aspect of the Dagda and has links to the horned hunting god Kernunos who was also the patron of wild animals. Mad Sweeney says about the, the oak, Bini lat for var dori, cronon goiv guin goiv gori. M more sweet wouldst thou deem under the oak wood the belling of the brown stag of the herd. Isn't that wonderful? The oak and the bull are linked in some folk tales. In one folk tale, sorry, one folk tale tells of how first a serpent and then a bull 
are bested by the hero and then tied to an oak. The hero beats the bull into submission with an uprooted oak. Another tells of a mighty bull that uproots an acre of land in one go and then throws up a mighty oak until it almost reaches the sky. That's very interesting. I wonder whether that's a, an astronomical myth in there somewhere pertaining to um, the uh, Milky Way. Remember the twining branches of the tale of Deirdre and the sons of Ishnach. Oh, I do apologise. Irish trees unavailable at BD. Would love to hear. Is that the book depository? Would love to hear a little about European beech too. Acorns are poisonous unless you know how to prepare them, says Dragonfly1007 on YouTube. Uh, no hot pot belly. I love the handles on YouTube, by the way. I have no idea what your real names are, but your handles are very funny. No hot pot belly says hi from McBride in British Columbia in Canada. Well, very good evening to you. Welcome along. Falche. Just making sure I'm not missing any uh, important. Daisy Peters has to go back to work. Endless blessings to all, she says. Uh, enjoy, enjoy your work if you can. Another tells of how a bull caught Cuchulain in the ribs and threw him against a great oak tree. A Scots Gaelic rhyme states that to carry an oaken staff produces heat in cattle. Mad Sweeney makes this enigmatic statement, quote, my aversion in woods, I conceal it not from anyone, is the leafy yearling cow of an oak swaying evermore, unquote. Again, the bull is linked to the god Dun. Whitley Stokes recounts a delightful story from the Bodleian Dinshanicus about an oak wood in the west of the plain of Macha that was so fertile it drove the swine of Ireland mad. Catherine Cooney says on Facebook, Hello, Anthony and all. Good to be here for the mighty oak. Good to have you here, Catherine. Very good evening to you. Welcome along. And somebody called Giant Oak on YouTube says, Working late and enjoying the stories. Very, very apt uh, handle there on YouTube. Excuse me. Is it Alex or Nick? Um, or Manrick Casterton. Hello, Anthony. Just checking. Is that... Is that Alex or Nick? I can't remember which. I do. I'm so. I'm so sorry. I don't know which of you it is. Peter Kennedy says late greetings from Balia Brigine. I kind of thought to Peter from Alcunde, Arclia. Hope you're keeping well. The wind would blow the scent of the oak wood all over Ireland, and whichever part of Ireland it drove the scent into, the swine would rush to seek it in droves. Interesting. It's Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Good evening to you. Welcome along. In the Welsh story of Math, son of Mathonwy, Clu, the rightful lord who has been ousted, is found in the form of an eagle taking refuge in an oak tree. A variant of the horned animal motif is found in the tale of the king of Norway's sons. You need to eat something sweet. It stops you yawning, says Anne Hurley. Yeah, no, I do apologize. I'm, I'm full of yawns this evening. The hero Cod slays a giant who has two goat's horns and a garment of hornless deer and roebuck skins about him. The sound of the giant's falling was said to be like that of a prime oak in the forest. Fraser shows how the oak was a symbol of the sky god and the god of thunder and lightning and we read from that at the beginning of the episode among the peoples of Europe including the ancient Romans and Greeks the Germans and Slavs as well as the Celts in Kat Maitura the battle of Maitura the daughter of Indek forbids the Dagda to go to the battle pledging to be a giant oak in every ford and pass that he will cross the Dagda replies that he will pass and the doctor replies that he will pass, and in token of this, the mark of his axe will remain in every oak forever. The author adds, and people have remarked upon the mark of Dagda's axe. It seems probable that the Dagda's axe is a symbol of lightning, similarly capable of splitting open a tree. The axe was an offering to the sky or sun god, and axes are found in earthworks and burials all over Europe. In the Irish context, it is clear that the oak was sacred to the Dagda and the underworld god Dun, both forms of the Celtic Jupiter. So there you go. 
the Oaks Association seasonal placing, the Oaks Association with May time, midsummer, with fire and the sun, clearly place the oak seasonally in summer. The oak is associated with OM letter Dor, which itself is the Irish for oak. The uses of oak. In early Irish law, the oak was classified as one of the seven Arag Fedo, or nobles of the wood. Oak timber was used for numerous purposes from constructing buildings and ships to barrels and furniture. In addition, the bark of the oak was used for tanning leather and for making a black dye. So there you go. Fascinating stuff from our good friend Niall McCutcher and his wonderful book, Irish Trees, Myths, Legends and Folklore. And before we finish, let me see if I can find something in the other wonderful book, Christine Zuccelli's Sacred Trees of Ireland. It's not, let me see if I can. I'm sure I can. It's which bit to read, I think, is the usual uh, conundrum. Oh, dear. Oak. 3, 9, 20 to 21, 23, 25, 32, 34, 37, 66, 83 to 84, 92 to 93, 95, 98, 109, 111, 115, 118 to 120, 124 to 126. Have I, have I got, have you got the picture yet? Oh dear, there's so much. Let me see if I can find something apt with which to close out. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Judgment trees. Wow. Doesn't specifically mention the oak, though. Let me just have a look here. <laughs> Chieftain trees and royal oaks. Well, Tree of Moynia is uh, something we've read already. In medieval Irish literature, kingship is often linked with the cult of great individual trees. And sacred trees are also used by medieval scribes as metaphors for kings and chieftains, as champions and protectors. And of course, the... Uh, the, uh, the Irish <laughs> word that we're familiar with for the sacred tree is the bile, B-I-L-E. <clears throat> the derivation of the Irish word for such a tree, bile, <laughs> cannot be established with certainty, but it seems to be closely related to the Indo-European root bilios for a champion. Very interesting. Um, the poem Mourning the Loss of Bile Thornton equates the sacred ash with a king when it laments. Okay, that's the ash. We have to move on a bit and find some oak, oak, oak. You see, the the, the one thing about Zuccelli's book compared to McCutcher is McCutcher's is all sectioned into tree types as chapters, whereas Zuccelli's is uh, categorized into, sorry, is segmented into categories or you know, chapter themes uh, and that's why each uh, um, each uh, tree is mentioned so many times uh, throughout I'm just going to show you a picture here look at that for an oak tree look at that fabulous that is my ayer tuna no no sorry that's Brian Baruza oak at Raheen in County Clare Alan Hoskins, you're probably closest of all our viewers. You're probably closest to that. I wonder, have you ever seen Brian Baru's oak tree? Locally, the magnificent oak at the fringes of Raheen Woods in East Clare is thought to be around a thousand years old. Not surprisingly, folklore has linked the tree with the most important son of the area, Brian Baru. Born in 926, the son of a Dal Gosh chieftain, Brian was either born or raised in the ring fort, Bale Baru. And that is certainly very close to Alan Hoskins' uh, because I asked you that before. Brilliant stuff. About 10 kilometres from Raheem by the shores of Loch Derg. He was installed chieftain of the Dal Gosh sept at My Ire. Is it My Ire? Is that how it's pronounced? Presumably in the vicinity of the sacred tree and resided at the royal palace of Kinkora, present day Killaloo, a short distance south of Bale Baru. In 1002, Brian became High King of Ireland, and his previously local campaign about 
uh, against the Vikings of Limerick grew into a nationwide struggle. Brian Boru was murdered in 1014 in the aftermath of the Battle of Clonturf. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Yeah, it's harder to find uh, um, parts that are um, definitively linked to uh, single trees. Um, it should be pointed out that, unfortunately, uh, a great deal of uh, Ireland's forests were lost to us uh, in the Middle Ages. Um, uh, and so that's where this book comes in. And I haven't read it yet, uh, but I've only dipped in and out of it. Uh, the Irish woods since Tudor times, their distribution and exploitation. And of course, a great deal of oak uh, was chopped down in, was it the 15th, 16th century? And a great deal of it exported. Uh, and some of it can be found uh, still in, in in the ceilings and walls of, of, of buildings in, in Britain. Uh, there were ships built from it as well. And of course, uh, we mentioned already barrels, coopers, uh, uh, and even um, some some uh, parts of uh, smaller boats, etc., uh, etc. Et so maybe that's something we can come back to, you know. I'll finish with a poem, and this is not particularly about the oak, but anyway, it seems to apt. Bring out the hemlock, bring the funeral yew, the faithful ivy that doth all enfold. Heap high the rocks, the patient brown earth stew, and cover them against the numbing cold. Marshal my retinue of bird and beast, wren, titmouse, robin, birds of every hue. Let none keep back, no, not the very least, nor fox, nor deer, nor tiny nibbling crew. Only bid one of all my forest clan keep far from us on this our funeral day. On the grey wolf I lay my sovereign ban, the great grey wolf who scrapes the earth away, lest with hooked claw and furious hunger he lay bare my dead for gloating foes to see, lay bare my dead who died and died for me. For I must surely die as they have died, and lo, my doom stands yoked and linked with theirs. The axe is sharpened to cut down my pride. I pass, I die, and leave no natural heirs. Soon shall my sylvan coronals be cast, my hidden sanctuaries, my secret ways. My secret ways, naked must stand to the rebellious blast. No spring shall quicken what this autumn slays. Therefore, while still I keep my russet crown, I summon all my lieges to the feast. Hither ye flutterers, black or pied or brown, hither ye furred ones, hither every beast. Only to one of all my forest clan, I cry avant, our morning revels, our morning revels flee. On the great wolf I lay, my sovereign ban, the great grey wolf with scraping claws, lest he lay bare my dead for gloating foes to see. Lay bare my dead who died and died for me. And that's from the Honourable Emily Lawless. What shall we do for timber? The last of the wood is down. There's no holly nor hazel nor ash here, but pastures of rock and stone. The crown of the forest is withered and the last of its game is gone. From Kings, Lords and Commons by Frank O'Connor. So there you go. In 1600, about one eighth of Ireland was forested. By 1800, the proportion had been reduced to a 50th as the result of the commercial exploitation of Irish woodlands following on the establishment of English control over the whole country. Yes, indeed, 17th century, not 14th or 15th, as I hinted at earlier. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, don't forget uh, that there were unpopulated parts of Ireland as well at the time. Anyway, that's something we might come back to. Uh, we have a couple of more trees to do in the series. Uh, we've done the yew, we've done the hazel, we've done the oak, and we've done one more, which I can't immediately remember. Um, uh, so there's, there's there are certainly a couple more episodes to come. Um, yes, the yew tree was the first. Uh, oh, the white thorn or hawthorn, we did that. And ash as well, Movanway says, yeah. So there's a few more. Uh, episodes uh, of the Irish uh, tree series, trees in Irish mythology to come. And uh, as usual, 
I take requests, or should I say I don't take requests unless I'm asked. Um, so please, by all means, suggest. Uh, Rowan, Mandy McCurl says, yes. Let me just have a look at the... Uh, Mm hmm yes Rowan we have to do Rowan don't we yes yes indeed we'll do Rowan as well Laura Odomatroy says hello Anthony good to be here hello Laura dogwood wouldn't be applicable would it well you see there wouldn't be much about it that's the only thing we couldn't talk very long about it you know what did the druids do with the mistletoe I'm not sure presumably they didn't kiss under it anyway uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's something I'll have to do more reading about. A thousand years old, yeah. Some some tree that. But as I say, unfortunately, a lot of our forests were exploited commercially um, from the 17th century onwards, and, um, and a lot of them disappeared. Um, elder. Uh, uh, Alex is asking, could we do Elder? Uh, again, I'd have to find out if there's enough material to do elder. We could, of course, we could do a few minor trees in one episode, couldn't we? We could put two or three trees into one. Yeah, elder is there, all right. Yeah. It's a fascinating area of research, isn't it? Trees. I'm ashamed to say I can't identify a lot of trees. Uh, terribly ashamed to say that then we don't have the diversity of species, uh, really, that we once had. Uh, we, we have a, a preponderance of certain species, like, for instance, uh, the non-native Leylandi is all over the place here in Ireland. Of course, for commercial purposes, Sitka spruce uh, is very commonplace. Um, you'll see an awful lot of ash trees uh, on the margins, uh, you know, in the, in the ditches and field boundaries of Ireland, you know. Looks like we had a couple of technical issues tonight as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have some acorn trees growing from saplings. Lovely gift. So there you go. Hopefully they will grow into mighty oaks. It's a wonderful thing to do is to plant trees for the future, knowing that you may never get to spend time in their shade. Who said that? You know, Maureen O'Leary says, O'Leary Castle near... In Shigila was surrounded by a large oak forest centuries ago. There you go. Mandy says, I think the Romans brought the beach. Yeah, interesting. The holly, says Margaret. That's another one we have to do is the holly tree. I'm not sure again. We may we may try to combine two or three of them into one episode. Anyway, I think we've uh, exhausted ourselves, uh, not physically, but uh, we've reached the end of the uh, material for tonight's episode mistletoe was used as protection over doorways according to one source you might uh, need it tonight Anthony says Mavanui <laughs> sweet thank you Anthony and Slauncha Mary Cronin says thank you great readings look I'm glad you enjoyed yourselves the main thing is that continue to keep uh, your yourselves safe uh, this is also on YouTube yes uh, Kendra Kelly asks I am also simultaneously live streaming on uh, youtube.com forward slash mythical Ireland uh, just in case if you're having issues with one sometimes people find it's better to switch to the other and they find that it works better uh, so stay safe everybody just keep washing your hands and using hand sanitizer socially distancing do what your government is advising you to do I know not everybody likes that idea because they think it's control at the end of the day we're just trying to keep uh, the number of people from dying to a minimum is what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep ourselves safe and well as well. And of course, I want to make sure that you keep coming back uh, to enjoy Live Irish Myths. And of course, don't forget Book Talk. Uh, so more episodes, I think, increasing in frequency uh, with the new lockdown. Um, because let's face it, can't really go anywhere. So might as well be here in the good, fine company of the uh, Live Irish Myths tour. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. We'll see you again uh, sooner rather than later. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just yet uh, which night we'll do uh, but uh, when we do uh, I will let you know in advance of course so uh, hopefully I'll see you then
In the meantime, Kolosov, Slongafol, Ichawa, August, Tog, Gobuge. Take it easy. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is Live Irish Myths. This has been episode 121. Good night. See you all.